3D Vision, one of NVIDIA's marquee technologies. So to go along with the GeForce GTX 680 launch, here I've got my Galaxy GeForce GTX 680. I can remove the glasses so you guys can see what the card looks like if you haven't already seen my regular performance review or my unboxing. And the focus of this video is going to be on 3D Vision. So what differentiates 3D Vision from its competitors first and foremost is the fact that it uses the NVIDIA ecosystem. So you get a 3D Vision certified display. In this case I'm using the VG236H monitor from ASUS. Honestly if you're buying a 3D Vision setup today I would definitely recommend going with one of the newer monitors with light boost whether it's the BenQ 2420T or the ASUS 27 inch, uh, I can't remember the model of it, but it has light boost. Light boost makes all the difference in the world whether you're using Gen 2 glasses, the ones that look like this, or Generation 1 glasses. It uh, definitely reduces headaches, reduces crosstalk between the two images, and provides a much brighter, more immersive 3D experience. So there's advantage number one is you got the NVIDIA ecosystem. That is the NVIDIA graphics card, the NVIDIA certified monitor, and the NVIDIA glasses means that everything works together. There's no guesswork involved. There seems to be a lot of confusion about AMD's HD 3D, and that is for good reason. I've tried on a couple occasions to get AMD HD 3D working correctly and it can be a bit of a bear. So for one, it only works correctly over DisplayPort, meaning there's only, I think, about two monitors on the market that support it out of the box. And number two is you have to get 3D inserting middleware, whereas NVIDIA is actually doing the work of putting in the driver profiles, uh, putting in the setup wizard, and getting you going in a fairly seamless manner. So what are we comparing? Since we can't compare any AMD cards because it'd be hard to do apples to apples, I want to compare the latest generation GTX 680 against its last generation equivalent, the GTX 580. I also want to compare it against the GTX 570, just so you guys have another point of reference. And finally, against the GTX 590, that is the ruler of the roost from the last generation, that is basically dual something between these two because it's got the same number of CUDA cores as a 580 but it's actually clocked about like a 570 so that's that's that graphics card so the 680 uh, oh yeah so 3d why do we need more power for 3d well for one thing let's start i've actually already run all of the tests for this one so i've pretty much got them here but let's take a look first at a case study of the gtx 580 so in this case i'm going to highlight the GTX 580 row for regular, and then the GTX 580 row for 3D Vision. Okay, so in terms of average frame rates, we see it requires about double the processing power in all scenarios, minimum, maximum, and average, in order to enable 3D Vision. We get half the frame rate. Crisis 2, we're going to see a very different scenario where actually 3D Vision doesn't uh, give it that much of a hit, which is something that Crisis 2 was actually designed for. With The Witcher, we see this scenario again, where it takes about double the processing power. Remember, it's rendering the scene from this angle, and then from this angle, and then using the glasses to show only the correct, the correctly angled scene to each of your eyes to give you that 3D effect. Next, Batman Arkham City, we see once again a huge performance hit for enabling 3D vision. And finally, with Skyrim, we see the same thing, where it takes about double the processing power. So that is one big reason why stereoscopic 3D gaming enthusiasts might go with something like a GTX 680 over a last generation card, because... Da, 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 da. You can actually see, I'm going to highlight the GTX 680 with a green color for... New NVIDIA cards. Okay, so the 680 actually performs across the board almost on par or better or sort of a little bit lesser or a little bit better than the last generation GTX 590, which if you guys recall is pretty much equivalent to two GTX 570s or 580s, somewhere in between that. So that puts it a clear double the performance of the 580 here in Battlefield 3, um, double the performance of the 580 here in Crisis 2, more than double the performance in The Witcher 2. Please note, 20 FPS is not playable. You'll have to dial back the detail levels one way or another. This is just giving us the relative performance in a GPU-bound scenario. 
Uh, next, we've got a significant improvement, although not nearly as huge as some of the ones we've seen before. So 60 from 40 for the GTX 680 versus the 580. And finally, in Skyrim, we see yet another doubling of performance. So while the regular performance numbers showed the GTX 680 definitely beating the GTX 580, do, do, do here. Actually, yeah, I guess it's pretty much close to double across the board. Maybe I should have looked more closely at these. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, Batman Arkham City, not so much. Aha! But then again, not so much. So, okay, what we've learned is that if you throw more processing power at it, in this case, the GTX 680 over the previous generation GTX 580, remember, this is clocked at 1 gigahertz, and that is a flexible clock speed using GPU boost. It'll actually scale itself up in scenarios where it's not using as much power. With 2 gigs of 6 gigahertz clocked memory, this is using a new 28 nanometer process. It consumes significantly less power than the last generation GTX 580. So you can see here, oh, no, 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 sorry, not, not against the GTX 580, but against the GTX 590, which is closer to it in terms of performance. So you're uh, saving as much as 100 to 150 watts under load across the board uh, compared to a 590 and getting similar performance, getting similar power consumption to the 580 and just blowing it out of the water in terms of performance, especially as you guys can see in 3D vision. So if you want to game in stereoscopic 3D, a GeForce GTX 680 is probably not a bad choice. And thanks to Galaxy for providing the GTX 680 that I use to run these benchmarks. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and oh wow, I almost forgot to mention that. Yes, the 680 is the first graphics card from NVIDIA to support 3D vision surround off a single card. So using DisplayPort and then dual DVIs, you can actually run three displays in 3D vision in surround mode off a single card. And I shouldn't say it's the first because technically the 590 supports it because that one has dual GPUs to power its three DVI ports. But it is the first single GPU card that not only supports 3D vision but also supports 3D vision surround off a single card.